I'm Irvin Japina. I am so honored to be a part of this house. I graduated from Cranbrook in 1970 and I've made my career doing commissions for homes. And when I think back of all the homes I've been part of, this one is one of the most memorable. I came from a small town in Pennsylvania. I couldn't do anything but make art my whole life. That's all I ever did. And I ended up going to the Philadelphia College of Art. And after I got there, I ended up going into fiber, printing and dyeing on fabric and weaving. At that time, I probably liked printing and dyeing more than I liked weaving. I looked around at all the people who were successful in the fiber world, especially like Jack Larson and my teacher Ruben Ashkanian. They had all gone to Cranbrook and so I applied to Cranbrook and I came here. I have to say it was dumb good luck because I had no idea what I was coming into. And Cranbrook couldn't have been a better place for someone who wanted to go into fiber. I worked on my old Bexel loom which is the classic Cranbrook loom. And there's nothing more wonderful as when you have a piece started and everything's right. And it's just a matter of sitting there doing it for days on end. Because these tapestries take me like two months or so to do. Uh, but it's a wonderful feeling after everything's worked out. You can just do it. But in the beginning, it's, it's agony because you can't figure out was that the right color once you start with certain colors, you have to stay with it. You just can't change it or wreck the composition. So I met the Smiths probably in the early 70s because they were always coming over to Cranbrook to every student auction. So everyone at Cranbrook knew them. And this collection really is part of that. I had had a show at the Yaw Gallery in 74 of my tapestries. I'm not normally doing tapestries at that time of my life. I was doing big floss of cave rugs and things like that. Uh, but I decided to do a whole different show of my tapestries. And so I did this show for Nancy Yaw and a couple of pieces sold and a couple of pieces, you know, get put back in the closet until you need them. So one day I was talking to the Smiths and they said, gee, Urban, we'd like to have something of yours in our house. Why don't you bring some things over? I said, you know, I have exactly the right piece, which ended up being the centerpiece of, of this, this tapestry. I brought them over and the frustration of where to put something in this house, because it is a collection of a lot of things. And there isn't a lot of wall space. So after I came here and we sat around for a while and thought, well, where could we put a tapestry? You have all kinds of pillows. You don't need my pillows. And I don't really care about doing pillows anyhow, <laughs> but I would really love to do something. And I threw the tapestry on the piano out of frustration. And both Sarah and Schmidt said, oh, that's it, make us a piano cover. And well, it wasn't quite big enough, but it was a challenge. I said, oh, this is perfect. It's a good start. So I actually designed four panels to go around the original tapestry. And I picked up the design that's in the clear story windows, which is sort of a key cutout design. And I incorporated that into the four panels, which were the four seasons of the year. And Oh, a month or so later, I brought it over and it was lined so that it would cover the piano and protect the piano. But then we also decided that it would be able to go up on the windows, hang up on the wall in back of the piano. So when they would do a fundraiser, which they did many of, they would hire a pianist to play. And the living room is so full of sun that would be very hard to sit in here. So by putting the tapestry up in front of some of the windows, it made, it made, it toned the light down just a bit. 
you know, after we finally got the piece decided on and so forth, it came down to it was time to pay for it. Well, the Smiths never were really wealthy people. They were comfortable, but they spent all their money on art. And we finally worked out a deal that they would pay me a little bit every month for a while. And that's how it got paid off, which is great for me because that meant I had income. And in those days, anything helped, you know, when you're trying to struggle as, as an artist in the beginning of your career.